because he asked him, he says, who do you say that I am? You see, in the first instance, he asked them, who do people say the son of man is? But now he says, who do you say I am? <laughs> and he is the I am, God. Amen. So he asked the question and Peter just picks on it. Revealed to him by the Spirit of God, he answers the question. But there's something that I want us to draw our attention to. I know that you heard this message over and over and over again. But this day, God is going to give you another insight into it, which is going to bless your life. Amen. And after he answers the question, Jesus says something. He says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because of the answer that you have given. Blessed are you. And you know, when you read the book of Matthew, Matthew's account, there was no part in the book that the whole, you know, the name of uh, Peter's father was revealed. Peter was known as the fisherman. Peter was known as the man, you know, he was emotional sometimes. But here we see that after he answers the question, Jesus brings a part of him that we all never knew. Simon Peter, son of Jonah. You see, there is a part of you that is yet to be revealed after Amen. you catch on to a revelation. Amen. It is the revelation that you receive about life. You see, life is full of answers, you know, uh, questions, you know. Yeah. Life is full of questions. Yeah. I remember when I was coming from Toronto, I asked myself, how am I going to get to L.A.? <laughs> my wife said, well, you have to buy a plane ticket and go. So my question was, how am I going to get there? The answer was, well, American Airlines have a, a plane that can take you there. So I had to pay them for the answer to my question. Amen. Amen. You see, the answers, you, the answers that you give to life, life's many questions will determine where you'll be in life, how high you will soar in life. There are so many questions in life. People are hurting all over the place. I remember we went uh, downtown. Uh, uh, that was Hollywood we, we went to. And, you know, we sat, we, we sat and had lunch. And as we were eating, these young guys came and went straight to the garbage. And they picked up some food that was, you know, in, in, in uh, those disposable um, plates. And they went outside and I saw them start to eat. As I look at them and we started talking, Pastor David couldn't eat again. He goes, you know what, I can't even eat. What is, what is this? Because these young men were eating from the garbage. And I said to Pastor, I said, you know something? This is Hollywood, you know? People are making millions here and people are eating from the garbage. Same place. But somebody has caught on to a revelation that people need something that they have. Yes. So now, therefore, they're not going to sit back, but they're going to hold on to that revelation that they receive. They're going to put work to it so that that will become something that people will pay them for. My question to you is, what revelation have you received? What answers are you giving to society? What questions are you answering? Because not until you begin to answer life's questions, a part of you will never be revealed. Because as you continue to do, as you begin to do the little things, you know, and respond to life's questions, you, you, you learn a lot about yourself. You 
learn a lot about the giftings that God has placed in you. Because as believers, sometimes we always say, you know what, Father, anoint me, Father, use me. But I want to remind you that you are anointed to do. Amen, amen. amen. Gifting. The anointing that we receive is for service. Jesus Christ says that whoever wants to be great, let him serve. So after you receive a revelation, after you receive something about yourself that nobody else has or nobody else can do, what you have to do is you have to put it to work. Amen. You have to take action. <laughs> because, you know, it's easy for us to say, Pastor, pray for me, or it's easy for us to rely on the man of God and always pray and say the things that the Bible and the promises that God has given us through his word. But to actually put it to work becomes a challenge for so many. The Bible says that David, we all know David as a shepherd boy before he killed Goliath. We all know David as a man uh, who used to play his, his instrument and sing his song. That is how Saul knew him. King Saul knew him as the guy, you know, when, when I get, I'm not feeling well, just bring him, let him play so I get well. That's all he knew him to do. But the Bible says that there came a time where a giant rose up. The whole land, none could rise up and say, you know what, I'm going to fight this one. Yeah. Why? Because they were scared, they were intimidated of his sight. But David saw something that none could see in the land. <laughs> and the revelation is David saw him as a dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though he looks like a giant, he had dressed like a giant who could fight. He was, you know, taunting them like a giant. Yet David saw him and said, you know what, this is a dog. You see, the Jews used to see uh, non-Jews as dogs. We read an account in the Bible where Jesus Christ comes to a place and a woman comes to, comes to him and says, come and heal my daughter. Jesus said, you know what? Mm -mm. The bread is not for dogs. Mm -hmm. It's not time <laughs> for you guys to come in. Uh -huh. You guys are not Jews. You guys are not in the covenant. You are not yet in there. Wow. So David saw him as a dog. You know what? I'm not going to get the, let this dog intimidate God's people. <laughs> but yet the king was in his, you know, sitting in his, in his throne, seeing a big giant standing there. Same person, but two people so differently. What are you seeing? You see, we can see that, we can say that, you know what, now after 9 11, there's problems here and there, there is this, that, but I want to remind you that somebody is also making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to remind you that somebody is being blessed. I mean, blessed there. Yeah. It's the same USA, mm -hmm. it's the same California, it's the same LA. But yet somebody's being blessed so much. Why? Because he has seen something that others cannot see. Mm -hmm. Amen. So David rises up and says, you know, can you come here? He said, you know what? I don't even want to put on this armor. Because that's a dog. Why am I going <laughs> to put on a, you know, a whole armor and I can't walk to fight a dog? And I know this, the, the guy was really, he was really mad when he was coming after David. He thought that he would probably come in an armor car, you know, and begin to shoot at him because he couldn't fight him with the fist or anything. <laughs> Yet David shows up with a revelation, with a knowledge that, you know what, I'm not going to fight this war. I'm not going to fight the Lord's battle with a dog. 